Hello everyone, I'm Alan, also known as McLaren2009, and today I'm going to be going over a basic system overview of my IFF transponder system. IFF stands for Identify Friend or Foe. The way that the system works, basically, there are different mode settings on the system. It outputs a unique identification number. Think of it like the tail number on a plane. This is the number that's seen to identify the aircraft by an air traffic controller. My system has a mode B that outputs the grid coordinates of the vehicle being tracked. And then there's also mode C, which outputs the vehicle's current altitude. This is also seen by an air traffic controller in real life. So, now I will show you my system built in Stormworks. This right here is my entire showcase of all radio systems that I've made. The link will be in the description for the video. This is my IFF transponder. As I said, IFF stands for Identify Friend or Foe. This works by identifying a coded pulse with information specific to that aircraft, and it can only be identified by a properly coded compatible system. It's not quite as simple as it is in like video games where you have like a radar screen that shows red dots are bad guys, blue dots are good guys. It doesn't quite work like that. That is the end result, but that's not how it does it. Basically, an actual IFF system sends out what are known as interrogation pulses. And these are coded signals that get sent out in every direction from the transmitter, and a properly coded system can receive this metaphorical key and they can translate the code into something usable. And it tells the air traffic controller, for example, what the vehicle is, how far away it is, and what altitude it's currently flying at. And then by the fact that it is properly equipped and properly coded, and it can translate the signal, that automatically implies that the vehicle is friendly and we don't need to shoot at it. Now, in Stormworks, I made a civilian equivalent of this system. As you can see, you have this nice little power switch, turns on a monitor. It looks like a radar screen, but it's not. This is, in theory, it could be overlaid on a map, but I haven't quite figured out how to do the uh, scaling to make it match up with the lines on the graph. But this right here in the center, this is our current vehicle. The red line points north. This will be, the numbers on the side here, this will be the target ID number, this will be the straight line distance to the target, this will be the magnetic bearing using a compass to the target, and this will be the vehicle's current altitude. Now, as you can see, these numbers are essentially meaningless, because we're not transmitting or receiving anything. So, just so that I have something to actually demonstrate the system, let's go over here and we'll turn on my integrated, trans or integrated navigation system. We'll set this to transmit on 2, receive on 1, set the ID number to an arbitrary number. I always use 654321. Turn on the transmitter specifically the IFF transmitter, turn on mode A, so it'll send out the ID number. Mode B will send out the X and Y grid coordinates from the GPS sensor, and mode C will turn out, will send out the actual altitude. So, 
now the system is set up this system is set up to transmit for the IFF portion of the system as you can see on this screen I've set the ID to 654321 the current altitude is 15 meters above sea level as you can see from the altitude sensor right there and our X and Y coordinates if we close this you can see our X and Y coordinates right there that'll be the main GPS screen I'll get to that in another video now we go back over here to our actual dedicated IFF system now we set that one to transmit on 2 and receive on 1 so we set this to transmit on 1 and receive on 2 as you can see Without even turning on the transmitter, I now know the target ID number, the straight line distance as a crow flies to that test set, the bearing to that test set, and its current altitude. Now, if you're wondering about the bearing, you'll look down here in the, in the center of my screen to my magnetic compass. This is telling you that it is bearing 045 degrees to get to the other test set. So, right now, you can see that I'm facing 139 degrees. Now, I look to my left, to 045 degrees, and conveniently enough, that is the direction of the integrated navigation system test set. The distance... In theory, I could set up a laser distance sensor to verify the distance, but this one, I'm just going to tell you to take, the, take it on faith. Now, the way that the actual system itself works, you have these four seven-segment displays. These show the transmitting frequency. This can go up to 100 frequencies from 0 to 99. This is your receiving frequency. I always put the transmitting numbers in red and receiving numbers in green. These can be changed using these arrow keys. As you can see, by changing the receiving frequency, we no longer have a tracked target. So let's go back down. Alright, now we have our target back. Now I'll explain what the rest of these displays are. This one up here is the target ID number, which you can see on the monitor. This is the target altitude, which you can also see on the monitor. But the difference is the monitor rounds the numbers so that they are easier to display on the screen. So as you can see, the actual altitude is approximately 14.68, and that's rounded up to 15. No harm, no foul. Now you have your target X coordinates and your target Y coordinates. So 8928, go over here, 8929. No, 8928.80. Negative 13864. Negative 13864. Now, these are your mode selections. As I said, mode A transmits your ID. Let's set this to 123456. Mode B transmits your X and Y coordinates from your GPS sensor. Mode C transmits your altitude. But the thing is, it doesn't matter what mode you select if you don't turn on the transmitter. You have to activate the transmit antenna in order for the system to function. Now, since we have this set up to receive from frequency 2, let's demonstrate that the mode selection works. Let's say, for instance, I only want to transmit my ID number. You go over here, we have the ID, but we don't have an altitude and we don't have grid coordinates. Therefore, our distance isn't currently functioning. 
it's spitting out an arbitrary, completely meaningless number. Alright, so let's turn off the ID and turn on the grid coordinates. We no longer have an ID, but we have a distance and bearing along with X and Y coordinates. Now we turn off that, say we only want to submit, or we only want to send altitude. So, no ID, no grid coordinates, but we do have an altitude. So, the system works exactly as intended. In order to build this system, on an actual aircraft, the only things that you would really need, because this whole system takes up a lot of space, is you would need these five screens right here. You have four instrument panels, one for the frequency display, one for the frequency selection, one for the mode selection, and one to actually control the system, and then you need a keypad to set the transponder ID number. Now realistically, this cannot be changed in flight. So the way that you would set the transponder ID is handled in a separate avionics bay and it's done by the ground crew for the aircraft. Obviously it would be impractical for me to include that in my aircraft in Stormworks, but that's how the system works in real life. But, like I said, in order to put this on one of your planes, you need these five displays. This is only useful if you are building like an air traffic control tower. These are also generally only useful for an air traffic controller, not necessarily for the actual air crew. You'll also need a GPS sensor to give your grid coordinates, an altimeter to sense your current altitude, and a transmit and receive antenna, plus this microcontroller. It's pretty good size, so do with that what you will. But anyway, that is a brief overview of my Identify Friend or Foe transponder system. Thank you for your time.